What's up, everybody? This is Tech G back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA Tech Plus FC0-U71 certification exam. So let's get into it. In this video, we're going to cover the basics of computing, focusing on four key components, input processing, output, and storage. And these components form the foundation of how computers work and are essential for understanding computing at a fundamental level. All right, first up, let's talk about input. So input is how data enters the computer system. In simple terms, input devices allow users to communicate with the computer by sending it data and instructions. And common input devices include the following, such as keyboards. This is one of the most familiar input devices. So every time you type a command, search a term, or type on a document, you're using a keyboard to input that data into the computer. Then we have mice, a mouse this allows you to move a pointer and select or manipulate objects on the screen. So every click and movement translates into input. Then we have what are called touch screens. So think about how smartphones and tablets work. The touch screen allows for direct interaction by tapping, swiping, or pinching, all of which are forms of input. Then we have scanners. These are devices that convert physical documents or images into digital form, and they are also input devices. And we have microphones. So voice input has become more common with the rise of virtual assistants like Siri and Alexa, where your spoken words are converted into data that the system can understand. So input can be anything from pressing keys, clicking a mouse, or speaking into a microphone. And once the data is entered, the next step in the computing process is processing. All right, so processing is the heart of computing where the system takes the input data and performs operations on it to generate meaningful output. At the center of this processing is the central processing unit or the CPU. And the CPU is often called the brain of the computer because it handles all of the processing tasks. And the CPU performs two critical roles. The first one is arithmetic operations. These include basic mathematical functions like addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. And then you have logical operations. The CPU makes decisions based on conditions such as determining one value is greater than another. It executes instructions that are part of the software, breaking them down into basic commands the computer can understand. So here's how it works in practice. Suppose you're working on a spreadsheet. When you enter numbers and ask the software to calculate a sum, the inputted numbers go through the CPU where the arithmetic operations are processed and the result is calculated. Calculated. The CPU also handles more complex tasks like running an operating system, multitasking between different programs, and executing code behind web pages or software applications. And a crucial part of this process involves the memory, specifically the RAM or the random access memory. And RAM, it temporarily holds data that the CPU is currently processing. So think of it as a short term memory space for the computer, allowing the CPU to access and process data quickly. And then after processing, processing is complete, the results are sent to the next stage, which is called output. So output is the result of the data that has been processed by the computer. It's how the computer communicates the results back to the user. Output devices make this possible by taking the processed data and presenting it in a usable form. And examples of common output devices include the following. You have monitors. These are also called display screens and monitors. They provide visual output. Everything you see on the screen from your desktop to a video or a spreadsheet is output generated by the computer's processing of data. Then we have printers. The printers take digital data and produce physical output like a printed document or image. Then we have speakers. For audio output, speakers convert data into sound. Whether it's music, a podcast, or an alert, the processed data is transformed into something that you can hear. Then we have projectors. These devices take the visual output from the computer and project it onto a larger screen, often used for presentations or media viewing. So for example, Let's say that you're editing a photo on your computer. The monitor displays the changes you make in real time. The CPU processes each adjustment like brightness or contrast, and the output is instantly reflected on the screen. Just as input can be in different forms, such as text, images, voice, output can also vary. The important thing to remember is that output always represents the process result of the data initially entered into the system. 
And finally, we come to storage. So storage and computing refers to saving data for future use. And there are two main types of storage you should be aware of. The first one is your primary storage or RAM. So as mentioned earlier, RAM or random access memory is where data is stored temporarily while it is being used or processed by the CPU. It's fast but volatile, meaning all data stored in RAM is lost when the computer is powered off. Then we have what is called secondary storage. And this is long-term storage where data is kept even when the system is turned off. And some examples include the following. You have what are called hard disk drives. And these are traditional storage devices that store data magnetically on spinning disks. And we have what are called solid state drives. And these are a faster and more reliable alternative to hard disk drives. And SSDs, they store data on what are called flash memory chips. And we have what is called optical storage. So CDs, DVDs, and Blu-ray disks are examples of optical storage where data is read and written using laser technology. And then we have what is called cloud storage. So data is stored on remote servers and accessed over the internet. And examples of this include Google Drive, Dropbox, and iCloud. So storage devices are used to save data, files, and applications that we might need later. And here's an example. So when you save a document on your computer, it's written to the storage device, such as the SSD or the HDD. So the next time you open the document, the system retrieves it from storage so you can continue working. In modern computers, they rely on a combination of fast, temporary memory such as RAM and larger long-term storage such as a hard disk drive or an SSD. As technology advances, storage devices have become faster, more compact, and more efficient. So now that we've covered input processing, output, and storage, let's bring everything together with an example. So imagine you're writing a document on your computer. Here's how each of these elements work together. First one is input. So you use the keyboard to type, which sends data into the computer. Then we have processing. The CPU processes that data, understanding what you're typing, formatting it, and preparing it for output, which leads us to output. The words you've typed appear on the monitor as a visual output. And then we have storage. When you click the save button, the document is stored on the computer's hard drive or SSD, allowing you to retrieve it later. So this cycle of input process Processing output and storage happens constantly and seamlessly as we interact with computers. Whether you're sending an email, editing a photo, or browsing the web, these four basic components are at the heart of everything a computer does. All right, now with that being said, let's go into our check on learning to see if you all are comprehending this information. So first question is, which of the following is an example of an input device? Would it be a monitor, a keyboard, a printer, or a speaker? And of course, the correct answer to this is a keyboard. So Input devices, they allow users to provide data to a computer. A keyboard is an input device because it enables the user to enter data and commands. Monitors, printers, and speakers are examples of output devices which display or output data from the computer. Next question, what is the primary function of the CPU or the central processing unit in a computer system? Is it A, to store data? B, to execute instructions, C, to display graphics, or D, to provide power to the computer? The correct answer is it executes instructions. So the CPU is often referred to as the brain of the computer. Its main function is to execute instructions from programs and manage the processing of data. While other components handle storage, power, and display, the CPU processes and executes the computational tasks. And then our final question is, which of the following best describes the function of RAM or random access memory in a computer? Is it A, long-term data storage? B, the processing of data? C, temporary data storage for active processes? Or D, providing power to the CPU? The correct answer is it is temporary data storage for active processes. So RAM is a type of volatile memory used for temporarily storing data that is being actively used by the CPU. Unlike long-term storage, such as hard drives or SSDs, RAM holds data only while the system is running and is cleared when the computer is turned off.